So I'm working on some stems for a particular artist and it suddenly struck me that this is a really, really good opportunity to do a very short tutorial on, uh, in terms of pointing out the differences between an Imposca 2 insert effect and an Imposca 2 MIDI controlled effect and what the differences are really. So I've got a drum loop here which is nicely soloed and you should be able to hear that. All very nice. Now I want to affect this and normally what I would do is I would just go into the um, audio channel and then I would go down to audio units and I would go to GeForce and I would instantiate the Imposca 2 effect. Now that takes a little bit of time to open up but when it does you can see it resplendent in all its glory and the patch we've selected is you do the work which is a subliminal message to people who are incredibly lazy not that I'm suggesting anyone here is lazy in any way shape or form now here you've got oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 set to audio input and we press play but we don't hear anything and the reason for this is really simple we need to actually route the audio through it and allow it to pass through and to do that on an insert effect you would activate keyboard hold and then you would click on any note on the actual graphical interface itself so here we just clicked on C3 hey, and when we uh, press play we can hear it and we can filter it so that we know it's working and there's a ton of stuff we can do we can do things like we can actually uh, get rid of these altogether because there's another way of instantiating the audio routing through the plugin and that is on this noise balance you simply press alt and click on there and you see now that it says in the selected parameter it says audio input and then you basically put the uh, balance control in the normal events it, it balances between noise and the oscillators but once you've uh, made it, made the audio pass through it, it balances between the audio and the oscillators. So, if we click on this again, we can hear that that's working perfectly. So, why would you have two effects, I hear you ask? And the reason is simple. We've now pressed stop and we've re rewound the um, playhead. Now, when we press play again, nothing's going to happen. And that's because the host, in this case Logic, has transmitted note off information and that has affected the note that we clicked here originally on the GUI. So if we click on it again, all good. Click and rewind, replay, nothing, it's off. So this can get quite tedious and that's why we normally recommend that people go for the MIDI control effect. Now let's just get rid of this uh, in its entirety on this track so that we can hear the drum loop in all its glory again. There you go. Now two down. I'm going to unmute this. We've basically got a MIDI track and on this uh, recording here, it's simply one continuous note for 16 bars. But what we have got is instead of an effect in the inserts, in our MIDI, we have AU, MIDI controlled effect, GeForce, Imposca 2. And if I open that up, you will see another variation on You Do The Work. Firstly, I'm just going to get rid of an arpeggiator that's uh, on here. But you can see from this long continuous note on a B that when we press play, you can see the B's played. Now we can stop that and rewind it. We can open it up. Press play again. And every time we press play, that B is going to sound. Now if I want to change that to a C, you can see that the C's played. Yay, and this is fantastic. But where is the audio coming from, I hear you ask? And the truth is, what we do is we sidechain audio to this effect. So, audio one is actually a little Moog sample and hold thing we've got going on. 
audio two is a drum loop, audio three is an Imposca two, it's a bandpass pattern render, and then audio four is a little quiet. So we can take any of these and we can route them through this particular effect, which is absolutely awesome. So let's start with the drum loop. And here, like I say, we've got the audio input set there. So we've set the balance all the way over to the actual audio that's coming through. And if I take it out of solo, but I mute the drum loops and press play, we hear the drum track coming back through, filtered by the M2. And there's a ton of other stuff we can do here. When I pressed it originally, you heard some noise because now we can actually apply some um, voices to the oscillators one and two. So I've got full organ on one and strong lead on two. I've got a plus seven transpose on strong lead uh, on the oscillator two. But now what we can do is we can balance between the actual audio coming from the oscillators and the audio that's coming through from our drum loop. So this is just oscillators, and just drum loop. And then we can do things like apply a degree of ring mod to it, make it a little bit nastier. Half ring mod's quite nice. Plus three, and we can do things like change the gate time. So it's really nice and closed up. Or we can open it out. We can change the tempo. So let's take that to say four. Close the gate down. Try it on eight. We'll go back to 16. Restart it. It's on 15, so you can hear it's chaos. Restart it again on 16. Muck about with the filters. And even reintroduce the original drum loop. which is all really, really neat. Now, you'll remember that I actually got rid of an arpeggiator here before, but let's say we're gonna put an arpeggiator based around our original B. So that's what it's gonna play, but we can merge that with the drum loop. pitch of oscillator 2 or if we want we can get rid of our drum loops in their entirety and have up here I've got let's so like that a Moog sample and hold pattern so we can actually experiment by routing that, by sidechaining that. So here we go, audio ones, Moog sample and hold. So there's just the Moog sample and hold. Change the filters again. Add some audio from the oscillators back in. We can even change the arpeggiators, so we've got plus two octaves, we get rid of that, get rid of the plus one. Just have it so that it's triggering just on the B. Close that gate time down. Reintroduce the arpeggiator an octave above and an octave below. Open it up. 
open the gate a little bit. So use that against, cross-reference that against the original mode sample and hold pattern. And the drum loop. Change the volume on the effect. And of course, the beauty with this is every single time we stop and every single time we start, the gate is opened. So hopefully that's explained a little bit about the whole insert effects versus the MIDI control effects and why we prefer the latter because it just gives us so much more flexibility and it allows us to be consistent and just forget about things like having to reopen um, the, the gate as it were on an insert effect. Anyway, I hope that's been of use and uh, right, I'm off for breakfast. <laughs>